Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're gonna to be tracking aerial footage. And as you can see, there's a lot that kind of goes into this. We're gonna be tracking the shot. We're gonna be masking out some of the letters that are on the top there um, using tracked in mask markers. And we're also gonna be fixing for the fisheye distortion from the GoPro in order to make sure that these text or whatever you stick in the scene matches with the lens. This is a big tutorial, so let's get started. First off, a couple of things. If you have any questions along the way, make sure you post them as comments down below, and then we can address those comments and questions you have. And then second, I want to say thank you to Mark Richardson of a blog called Camera Stupid. And he is the one that donated this aerial footage for me to use in this tutorial. And you can actually download it for yourself to follow along and be able to follow along with this tutorial. There's a link in the description for that. But I want to talk about this. Here's his blog, Camera Stupid. So if you're into photography, it makes it simple. Lots of different tutorials and even some stuff to download as far as um, presets and Lightroom, things like that. Um, but what he also did, which I didn't even ask for, he just offered to do this, which was really cool, is he's giving away a discount on his aerial photography and videography guide. He has created a whole course um, on Udemy like I did with my course for motion typography. And he just went ahead and gave a discount to everyone of my followers and subscribers that click on the link. It's down in the description below. So if you wanted to, if you have gotten a new drone for Christmas, if you are wanting to get into some aerial photography and videography, he'll step you through everything in this course. And you can see there is 41 different videos. So pretty thorough. Um, of what to do as far as using drones for photography and videography. So click on the link and check it out. So let's get started with a brand new composition. I've got my aerial footage. Drag it and drop it into a new composition. So let's go in, let's name that composition drone footage, just so we know what it is. Okay, first thing you want to do before we do any tracking is we need to compensate for the GoPro. So let's take this pre-compose, so that's Command Shift C to pre-compose, and we want to move all attributes into a new composition, and let's call this footage. Click OK. Let's double click and go into that composition, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the comp size. So I like to do is just right click to the left or to the right, anywhere off of the main canvas, and then go to composition settings. And what I'm going to do is just increase this size by quite a bit. So you need to be a lot bigger than the footage. Then we're going to add to this an effect. So go down to effect, distort, optics, compensation. And then we need to click on this reverse lens distortion. And then what this is going to do is it's going to kind of flatten this out. You can see how everything is curved. But when I when I crank this, you can see it's going to straighten everything out. All right, that's looking pretty good. With this one, we're in the 70s somewhere. But to be able to see it better, I'm going to take this resize down to unlimited. And then you can see everything. Let's zoom in. And we want to find any kind of straight line. So this line right here, we want to make sure that is pretty straight. And that's looking pretty straight. All these lines need to look pretty straight. See, when it's down like this, you can see how it's curved. Let's go back up. Let's try about 73. And that's looking pretty good. Now, at this point, we can track this. But I am going to go ahead and pre-compose this again to flatten the image with the optics compensation. So Command Shift C, pre-compose, and we'll call this track footage. OK. Now, now before I track this footage, I want to go into this composition. And I'm going to add just a little bit of contrast to this. So I'm going to go to my color correction, add some curves, and increase the contrast just so that there's more for the tracker to kind of grab a hold of. And then maybe we can also come in here and sharpen it up as well. That there's just more for the camera tracker to look at. Because the camera tracker kind of works off of based of contrast of pixels. So now that I have those on there, 
Let's go in and just right click on the footage and let's hit track camera. Let's come down to advanced. Make sure detailed analysis is on. Now, this is going to take some time, roughly about five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through this part and then you'll see me when we're done tracking. Okay, so the camera tracker is now done. And if I click on the effect right here in the effect controls, you can see there's all sorts of little markers all over this. And as I scrub through, you can see those markers correspond to parts on this building. And they're actually everywhere. You can see them clear back here on the ground all over, even up here on the street lamp. So what we can do with this is use those markers to attach things to this building. And in the example, I had letters on the building. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do one on the, on the roof first because I want to show how to mask that out. So let's find some markers we like. So anytime there's three markers and you put your mouse in between the three, it'll kind of create a plane. So right here, these three, which is that one, that one, and that one. I right click and I can create a solid and a camera or I can create a null and a camera or a text and a camera. Let's create a text and a camera and it creates text layer right there. So let's just call this the roof and then you can see it's tracked on pretty darn good. And what I can do is now that it's on the roof and everything's in perspective, I can come in, I can rotate this. I just use the rotate tool which is this one right here, or if you hit W on the keyboard and you hit V and it brings back to your selection tool and I can move this to wherever I want. Scale it down and it's just going to keep everything in perspective because I have it tracked in the right spot. And you can see here though Sometimes these tracks aren't exactly perfect. It doesn't look like it's quite the right angle um, on the Y rotation. So I've hit W and I can come in here and just kind of straighten that out. It was just slightly off. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Okay, I am going to go into this track footage and let's go ahead and take off the curves and the sharpen and it should speed things up. Okay, now what I want to show you here is I want to mask out this roof because you can see that it kind of see how it, it should be covered up by this roof line but it's not it's sticking out and so I want to mask that and so we need to create some mask planes in order to do so so let's again click on the track footage and on the 3d camera tracker and let's find some of these planes that represent the front of this building and right there that's looking pretty good so I'm gonna right click and create this time I'm gonna create a solid and just kind of scrub through, make sure it's kind of moving the way you want it to. Let's go to that solid and let's kind of line it up. It's a little bit kind of out of a line. And I can use these arrows to line up with things like these windows. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And let's go ahead and just scale that up. And let's move it over so it covers up the front. All right, so now that we have that, what I can do is just use this as a track mat. So I'm going to go to the roof layer, go down to switch toggles and modes, and under track mat, I'm going to do alpha inverted mat. Okay, Let's take a quick render of this to see what it looks like. Looking pretty good. So we can go ahead and add more to this, and it's just the same technique, which is to go to the track footage, click on the camera tracker, find the points we want, and then we can add in things. So for instance, so we want to add a new name to this. Again, same thing. Let's get some text. Give it a new name. And let's orient it to the side of the building. And now we've got a new name on the building. So pretty simple stuff with that. Now say we want to add some actual 3D objects to the scene. Well, I'm going to use Element 3D to do that. If you don't have Element 3D, well, then you can use Cinema 4D Lite that comes with After Effects. But let's do the same thing. Let's go down, click on the track camera, and let's pick a spot here on the sidewalk. 
maybe right here. Let's create a null in that object right there. And that's right here. So this is track null one. And then let's go ahead and bring in a new solid. So command Y, make sure it's comp size. Now this is a large comp, so um, it will be a large solid. I'm gonna go in and get my element layer. And I'm just gonna use one of the starter pack models. And we're putting a big rock just right in the sidewalk. And right now it's up here at top. But if I come into the group, create a group null, and then I can take that track null and copy the position to the group null and scale that up and rotate this however I want. And now that rock should be right there in that spot. So let's go over to our drone footage where everything is back to normal. And there we have, let's just go ahead and do a quick render. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like that rock there. So I can come in and easily change that as well. So let's take out the rock. And maybe I can come into some of my other models that I have. That's kind of cool. There we have a whole new building right in front. So that's just some fun things you can do. Let's maybe move that building so it's not right in the way. Let's maybe move it across the street. Okay, so some things to remember with this is first off, you need to straighten out your footage because if you're using GoPro footage or any wide angle camera, which most drones are using, then everything's going to be looking all curvy. And so you use the optics compensation, but you need to do it twice because you don't want it to be straightened out because that looks a little funny because it's meant to look like a GoPro. And so then afterwards you curve it back to the way it is in order to make everything work. Also, you need to straighten it out before you track the footage. Otherwise, it's not going to track as well because the 3D camera tracker is not used to tracking footage that is curved like that if you're planning on putting elements into the scene. It's just not going to work, trust me on that one. So, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I know I had said that at the beginning to ask questions in the comments below. Um, but I do want to thank, again, Mark Richardson of Camera Stupid and also of this drone course. He's giving a nice discount, 50% off. Um, just click on the link in the description. Um, and he is the one that provided the footage that you can download and follow along with. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I've said that several times. I just encourage you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks.